If you are a homemaker, you have probably gone through the cycles of fear and guilt and fear of judgment <laughs> about not bringing in an income to your family or fear of what people think about you or what you're doing with your time now that you're not out working at a job because in our culture today, the lowest status you can be is someone who is unemployed. And so people seem to think that when you quit your job to become a homemaker that you are like, oh, shame, she's just gonna go home and maybe cook, maybe clean, and sit around her house watching TV, and that she is no longer adding value to society. I heard all of those things and felt all of those things when I quit my job in 2018. And for me at that time, the only way that I could justify quitting my job to come home was to get pregnant and have children. That is what I had seen from women who were homemakers every single one of them quit their jobs to come home because they had children. And that was not happening in the timeline that we had hoped for. And so I was dealing with this inner turmoil of desperately wanting to come home and be a homemaker, but I didn't have the, what I thought was the justified excuse or reason. The root issue is that our society and culture no longer sees the household as an economy itself, which is what it used to be. I mean, the word home economy is nearly extinct. If you type in building the home economy on Google, what will come up is stuff about real estate, house building. When I went to an acupuncturist one time, they had me write down what my occupation was and I put homemaker and the doctor thought that that meant I built homes and I was caught off guard because he was like oh so you build homes and I was like oh gosh <laughs> he thinks I'm like a construction worker but that is how so far we we are removed as a culture and as a society from the home being a place of productivity a place of the home economy. Meanwhile, those same people that judge the homemaker or assume the homemaker does nothing, they're the ones that are hiring landscapers. They are hiring babysitters or putting their kids in daycare or outsourcing them to public school. They are the ones that are hiring maid services, cleaners to come and clean stuff around the house. They're the ones that have meal kits coming to their house or are going out to eat to consume all of their meals that are pre-made from someone else. And they're likely the same ones whose husbands have other women be their personal assistants or secretaries while the husband's wife is out working for some other big corporation not helping him and living a totally different lifestyle. That's what our culture has glorified. That is the picture perfect image that we have given to these young girls of why they need to go to university. Meanwhile, there is an abundance of work to be done in the home. It just doesn't look like a high status job where you can go into the city and get your Starbucks and walk in to work, which is what Hallmark movies wish to glorify. Meanwhile, all of those women in those Hallmark movies are hating their life and seeking a husband to escape that life, but that's a different subject altogether. Everywhere we go, we're faced with these pressures that expect you to be outside of the home. The government wants you to work outside of the home because that means more tax dollars. Joel Salatin has an amazing quote where he says, a dollar saved is a dollar 30 earned. That is something to keep in mind when it comes to having a productive household instead of a consuming household. Corporations want women working because that drives down wages and also working women buy more stuff. Women in the workforce also brings stress upon marriage because now the husband and wife are living two different lifestyles. The children are put under stress because they are put into school systems, after school programs. How many kids leave the house at seven in the morning and don't come home until after five and then when they get home all they do is eat a bowl of cereal and watch TV all day and then we wonder why there is a breakdown of society. Households then become consumer households instead of producer households. Then there's so much deception around this because the women who then quit their jobs and decide 
to come home are now dealing with this guilt that they're not using the university degree that they went to school for, their low status, all they are is their child's babysitter that their husband pays for and they're not adding value to society. But when in reality, it's the exact opposite. So we have to shift the frame from thinking you coming home, you are now just consuming your husband's paycheck. Because the reality is when you were working for a corporation, that is the ultimate consumer place. When I was working outside of my home, we were consuming Whole Foods hot bar because I did not have the time or energy to cook at home every night. And when we weren't going to the Whole Foods hot bar, we were either getting pizza once a week or I was getting like semi pre-made meals at Trader Joe's thinking that I was cooking food from scratch when in reality I wasn't. I was buying the tub of bruschetta, the tortillas and you know, that type of stuff. One that was not great for our health even though I was trying to be as healthy as I could in those dynamics. And two, we were spending so much more money on food. That was one of the first things that we noticed when I quit my job was how much money we saved from me cooking at home and from me learning to cook with ingredients instead of buying so many pre-made things. And so that's why with this series that I'm doing on building the home economy, I want to break down how every area of the home from the kitchen to health to the garden all of these areas are productive places to be and you are benefiting your household through the finances through your health and through the atmosphere that you create in the home then in that time frame of me working outside of the home we also were using way more entertainment because i didn't understand making the household a sacred place, a place where we want it to be. Instead, it felt, kind of felt like we wanted to get out of the house because it wasn't nice and enjoyable. So we would go out to eat or go and enjoy other places. And we still like going out and enjoying nature now, but I've also learned that part of my role in being a wife and helper to my husband is creating the home as a place that's enjoyable to be. On the topic of health stuff, I was a consumer of supplements because I did not have the time or energy to cook meals from scratch. So I was worried about if I was getting enough nutrients in through our food. So we were buying so many supplements during that time. I also was buying all of our cleaning products and home goods. I didn't even know that you could make those things with the best cleanest of ingredients for a fraction of the price. So again, saving money and being healthier for us. I didn't have the time or energy to even research how to do those things when I was working outside of the home, which again, I was consuming something that someone else produced, which wasn't as good for us and which was way more expensive. I was also consuming, like I said, all of our food from big box grocery stores instead of trying to learn how to grow things in our yard from our garden and then learning how to preserve things so come winter I could continue to use the food that we grew in our garden all throughout the rest of the winter. I didn't know how to garden. I had never grown food before. It wasn't until I quit my job that I finally had space to learn how to do these things. And then I'm talking about health with all of this because with the working lifestyle comes an extremely heavy load of stress. There is stress from the work. There is stress within the family because the husband and wife are on two different pages, have two different missions, and what comes from stress is health problems, which means you are in need of medical care. And again, that ties into finances. That stuff is extremely expensive. And then with women in the workplace, how much time is spent back in the household when you are with your husband complaining about your work and complaining about the drama that happened in the workplace? That was also one of the first things that we noticed when I quit my job was I didn't complain as much. I didn't realize how much of my time was spent dwelling on my frustrations in the workplace or people drama. All of that was gone from my life, our household, and my husband's life. So he no longer had to spend his energy on me venting about the drama in the workplace. And so that's where I wanna bring it to the Proverbs 31 woman who was the ultimate 
home economist and is the most beautiful vision for us to understand our value of working in the home, for the home, from the home, for our husbands, being a helper to our husbands. The words of King Lemuel, an oracle that his mother taught him. An excellent wife, who can find? She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and you will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from afar. She rises while it is yet night and provides food for her household and portions for her maidens. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She dresses herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hand to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household are clothed in scarlet. She makes bed coverings for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sits among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them. She delivers sashes to the merchant. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household, and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her works praise her in the gates. The Proverbs 31 woman was a married woman. So if you're a single lady listening to this, I pray that this gives you hope and excitement for your household. And also I want to point out Proverbs 31, 12. She does him good, not harm, all the days of her life. So you can be doing your husband good and not harm now before you even meet him. So as we read Proverbs 31, over and over and over again, it was providing for her household producing things for her household, from her household, for her community. She was doing all of this under her husband's authority. So many people want to take the Proverbs 31 woman and put her up as a boss babe and this corporate lady and this savvy businesswoman. And everything she was doing was for the work of her home economy. And I think that's part of the deception with this desire of wanting to be a boss babe or a savvy businesswoman is thinking that the ultimate goal is for you to be high status. And that is really what feminists push women into is you go become a man. And when you read the Proverbs 31 woman, her status came from being her husband's wife. Her husband was a man of high status. He was at the gates, it says, her husband is known in the gates and he sits among the elders of the land. And I think that the reason her husband could do what he was called to do was because she was skillful in the household and she wasn't busy trying to create and do her own mission apart from him but instead she came beside him as they were equally yoked and helping him to do what god called him to do that's the picture of a wife submitting to her husband is coming alongside of him and being like i'm gonna do this together with you i'm not going to compete with you as we live separate lives that's what we felt when i was working and scott was working we were like, this is the exact opposite of the picture that we had for a life together. When we were dating, we said we didn't want to be a married couple that lived separate lives. We wanted to do life together. And me working for another corporation and Scott working for another corporation, we were living out the very opposite thing that we were hoping for. And the first step was me quitting my job to come home, which at the time felt like a sacrifice because I was bringing an income in. But I do believe that God honored that place of seeing us wanting to live obedient to his ways of, you know what, I'm going to sacrifice what I think in my own head is the best way for me to add value to our family by bringing in an income to come home, learn how to manage our household, manage our home economy, and learning how to be a helper to my husband. 
I then had the flexibility, the availability to help him as he needed. Strapping an extra engine on his mission to do what God has called him to do, and because I married him, called me to do as well. And how beautiful then it is it for your children to see that as a marriage, that marriage isn't just two separate lives, but marriage is a husband and wife working together to do what God has put on their hearts to do. So my point with doing this homemaker series is creating a new vision for all of the work that there is to be done in the home and to really get a grasp for the home economy. So when you hear the word economy these days, what comes to mind is, oh, the economy is trash, things are expensive, something with the government. But I have a dictionary from 1936. I got this dictionary a few years ago at an auction for a dollar. It's massive and beautiful. When you look up the word economy from 1936, it is totally different from what economy is described as today. So I like this dictionary because it gives the Latin meanings behind the words. So the word economy derives from the words oikonomia and oikonomos, which oikonomia means household management. And then there's oikonomos, which stems from the word oikos, which means house. And then nemen, which means to distribute, to manage. So the word economy derives from to manage the home. The very first definition in this dictionary is the management of domestic affairs in regulation of household matters, especially as to expense. The second definition is orderly arrangement and management of the affairs of a community, a state, or establishment directly concerned with its maintenance or productiveness. And then the third definition is thrifty and careful administration management without loss or waste as a housekeeper accustomed to economy. And so right there, it's about the productivity of a household. So that is the root definition of economy, which is the picture of building your home economy. And then I want to share with you the definition of home economics that is in this 1936 dictionary. It says, the science and art of dealing with homemaking and the relation of the home to the community. Theory and practice concerning the selection and preparation of food and clothing, conditions of living, the use of income, the care and training of children, and also the study or teaching of home economics or an academic department concerned with this. Which is fascinating because most of us took a home economics class at some point. Somehow it got shortened to home ec. And I feel like it lost the weight of its meaning by being called home ec. I also feel like it lost the weight of its meaning when boys were in the class because my memory of home economics was a joke. I actually just was organizing some of my old paperwork the other day and I found one of my journals from middle school. I was in the seventh grade and I was in home ec class. My egg that I was cooking on the oven caught on fire and the teacher had to throw the skillet out the window. And I'm like, no wonder I hated cooking. What a terrible experience. <laughs> in home ec class, the teacher had to throw my skillet out the window. And I think my confidence had to have dropped because I hated cooking. I did not enjoy it. I did not feel confident with it. Even when I married Scott, I struggled to learn how to cook and to even feel joy and excitement with it because in my mind, I was not a good cook. And today I could be wrong, but I feel like most school systems are trying to get these extra classes out of the school system, which is fascinating because I am reading about Catherine Beecher and she was a woman in the 1800s that pretty much her life mission was to get women to be educated and understanding the home economy. And feminists love to claim Catherine Beecher as their own. So Catherine was Harriet Beecher Stowe's sister. And so, you know, for her time, she probably was more of a feminist in that she was wanting women to be educated, but it wasn't for the reason that feminists today would have liked her to get women to be educated. Like most higher education today is to get women to work outside of the home, away from their families, 
Catherine Beecher was a Christian and she understood the woman's value in the home. And her hope was to get girls to learn domestic skills that they could then bring into their household to add greater values to their households, to their husbands, and to their children. So her big push was for home economics classes but it was strictly for girls and it was strictly to get them to be educated in a sense that it would benefit their homes. She wanted girls to understand medical needs and cleanliness so they could treat their children themselves instead of having diseases run rampant. She wanted girls to understand how to sew so they could then make clothes for their household. She wanted girls to understand nutrition and how to cook with ingredients so that way girls could then go home, cook foods for their households. The way that public school system is today, nobody is encouraging girls to be homemakers. Most public education today is sadly saying if you don't go to college then you're an idiot you're dumb and so tons of young girls feel the pressure of having to go to university when they should never be going on that path to begin with and what is the point of girls going into higher education it is to push them to become second-rate men when God made us to be uniquely different from men. We have unique roles that are totally separate from men. There are things that we as women can do that men cannot do. So if we embraced the feminine roles that he gave us and the domain that he gave us of the home, I think we would have greater value and purpose and excitement for the work in front of us instead of trying to become men. De Tocqueville has an amazing quote. He was alive in the 1800s. There are people in Europe who, confounding together the different characteristics of the sexes, would make of man and woman beings not only equal but alike. They would give to both the same functions, impose on both the same duties, and grant to both the same rights. They would mix them in all things, their business, their occupations, their pleasures. It may readily be conceived that by thus attempting to make one sex equal to the other, both are degraded. And from so preposterous a medley of the works of nature, nothing could ever result but weak men and disorderly women. And is that not the times that we are living in? Weak men, disorderly women. And so I think part of getting back to the way God created us is to understand our purpose, our roles, what we can bring to our households, and what an honor it is that we get to be the ones to manage our home economy and understand how to make our homes a place of production. Home is the forward operating base of heaven. The work that we do here is eternal work and what an honor it is to use the work of our hands to glorify God, to help our husbands, and to make home a beautiful place to be. Thank you for watching today's video and I will have many more practical videos coming out about building the home economy and I'm going to go through all the areas of the house and what I have found is helpful for me. And I know so many of you guys have shared a very similar testimony to mine, so it's so cool to see that so many of us are trying to live obedient to God's ways, living counterculturally, and learning confidence in this area. So I bless you, I bless your households, and I bless the work of your hands.